Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be continuing to do these kind of one-off videos showing how I build lineups uh, specific to a slate and the different challenges that kind of uh, emerge. And it's my hope that you guys will learn something from this and, and I don't know, uh, maybe apply these types of dilemmas and these types of solutions to other slates. And you're watching me kind of struggle with this in real time, which I think is going to be interesting. I am going to pause a couple of times when I have to do some grunt work. Um, but aside from that, this is as I'm thinking through it. So it's it's a weird thing that we're going to be talking about today. And, and that's going to be a very small eight game, uh, eight match tennis slate. Okay? Now, usually I, I almost never play um, the eight match tennis slates because it's so hard to get in your niche. I mean, you're just really just fighting to dupe with a bunch of people. But we're going to take on that challenge. Um, and deal with a couple of things that could show up in eight in eight match slates. Now, I should tell you that there are two uh, tournaments that I'm going to be playing today. One, I am going to be playing that line painter, um, which is the you know the MME um, the uh, MME version of the slate, uh, and and that's usually again it's it, it's usually much uh, I don't know I'll only play it if they're usually 16, maybe 16, uh, 16 matches, um, just because you can get, you know, you have a chance to, to get sort of unique in those, but, but this time it's very rare, but I'm still going to be playing it anyway. Um, just, just because I feel like, it. <laughs> uh, the other two I'm going to play are the break point and I'm going to show you actually exactly what's going on here. So I haven't even drafted my lineups yet at all. Um, and the, we start in an hour and 20 minutes and you'll see it says draft now for all of them. And I'm playing a full 40 lineups in the line painter in an 80 in an eight match slate, which is usually not advisable what we're doing anyway uh, to see if we, we can't, you know, uh, discover a few things. Uh, the break point again, that's usually the single entry. There are only 16 people in that. And we're also going to be playing a qualifier into the uh, king of the baseline, which is probably going to be a tough one, but Hey, we're going to do it anyway. And remember, what we're trying to find different types of lineups for each of these contests. You know, if we're just trying to win the king of the baseline, you don't want to get too crazy. And similarly with the break point. However, one thing that I've found is that these tournaments, like the break point and the king of the baseline, it, it, it's you're, you're fighting against people who are using the same processes and, 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 and projections. And, and let's face it, tennis projections are not very difficult to do on your own anyway. So what usually people are doing is just putting their top lineups in those things. So you can, you can actually um, try to get uh, some uniqueness, okay, um, by maybe not taking the best projected lineup. But like for example, if one lineup projects like seven points better than all the others, I can promise you that you'll get like three people that pick that for their entry, and you can almost pick your second, third, or fourth best lineup at random uh, and, and and do better because you're going to be getting leverage against all three of those. Because even if those that lineup does hit optimal, they don't even win. They end up going to have to play, make a playoff anyway. So uh, just like re regular GPPs, you still have to be in contact, right, with the idea of uniqueness, even in these small fields. Um, so let's kind of get after it. With the other thing I wanted to mention before we even start is uh, it's very possible, I would even say probable, that we take shots at uh, at, uh, at match stacking. I mean, it, it's so unlikely it ever works in the types of contests I usually play. Um, but in an eight-match slate, I mean, I, I have to think that, that stacking is sort of in play, you know? Um, but we'll, we'll see. So the first thing we have to do is figure out our projections and figure out what to put into SaberSend to start building our lineups. And we're already into a little bit of a problem here. Okay, so as usual, the the actual point projections are going to are pretty are pretty standard. It's very very it's it's not easy. I mean, it's not difficult to make tennis projections, and I can do some of my own. I can take industry ones, whatever, and they all are really really tight. Okay, so you're really not going to be able to distinguish yourself as far as projections go, which kind of makes it kind of fun because all you're going to be able to distinguish yourself with is, is your, is your 
I don't know, your willingness to get different and your willingness to take a little bit of the projection heat and, and not play the top lineups. Um, as Tom Fleetwood bogey is the end of, end of the round. Anyway, but what you do see is, is some really weird, I would say weird discrepancies, but uh, when it comes to ownership in tennis, the my projections are not that great, and the industry projections are just not that great. Uh, they, they are, it, to some in some slates, it almost looks like random number generators, and sometimes it's a little better. But the ownership projections in golf, for example, are just much better. I mean, I, I can even make my own much better than 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 uh, than tennis. I mean, uh, tennis is just I don't know what it is. It's just but the ownership projections are really really bad. The the one thing that I can do to improve on this is literally replace or at least include as one of my inputs the uh the distribution of players that i get when i run like a full set of lineups in other words what i found is that the my the closest ownership projections to reality is not the ownership projections of the industry or my own it's almost always going to be the actual distribution of lineups that I create when I just build a whole ton of lineups using my projections, because as I mentioned, projections are pretty standard and it's easy to make them and most people have them. So if I just build like 5,000 lineups or whatever, that's going to probably reflect and, and see what, what I get without making any, you know, SIM adjustments or anything. I think that's going to reflect a pretty good, you know, pretty good estimate of what the field is going to do. And that's, all we're really trying to accomplish here is figure out what the field is going to do so that we can figure out which of our lineups to play against that field. So the first thing I want to do is I want to run a Sabre Sim build um, with the with the projections and then just basically see what type of you know distribution of players I get. So let's just put this in and I might have to pause this while this is going. And I mean I'm not worry too much about ownership projections for this so we'll build we're going to put in 40 but just to remind us that we are going to play 42 at max 42 lineups and let's build like a full set of 5,000 lineups okay so it's 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 um it's not going to really produce them oh wait is we're we not even set on sims yet it is set on sims so why tell me all 5,000 lineups are created already that's pretty freaking crazy if that's the case. Let's take a look. I don't believe that. Yeah, they're, oh my God, they really built them. So again, there are only so many combinations that there are. So that's why, you know, we're, we're, it happens so fast. The one thing I didn't do, by the way, I didn't allow for, I don't think, for opposing. Yeah, I put in don't use opposing players. I wonder if I should not. Yeah, I'm not going to do that because you know what? I'll tell you something else. We're going to run this again because if we're going to predict what the field's going to do, I promise you a good amount of the field is going to be doing match stacking. So for us to make a rule to not allow that, uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So you look at the pool here and you, know, you have 5,000 lineups and now this rates what, you know, each player is getting in that pool of 5,000 lineups. So I'm going to suggest that this ownership projection is going to be pretty close to, um, it's going to be pretty close to actual, uh, as opposed to the straight ownership projections I was getting earlier. The only thing that worries me about this distribution is it doesn't look like anybody's really taking the stand, here, you know? Um, so I think what we're going to do is instead of putting in 5,000 lineups, let, let's put in actually the amount of lineups that are going to be in the contest. And now I know this is not taking in all the dupes or anything like that, but so let's, let's ma maximize our, our number of lineups at 1176. So let's do this again. Um, build settings. Let's go 1176 and we're going to rebuild now. Build. All right, so now it looks 
it gets a little bit better. Um, it does look a little bit better. So what we're going to do is I want to put these lineups or these ownerships as kind of another input. Uh, uh, I think that this is, a, this is probably smart. Okay. The other thing that we could do is just leave this, um, is just leave this as our pool to compare our lineups to. And we, we call that kind of simming against ourselves, right? Um, and I, I think that's, I think that's worth doing as well. So why don't we do this? Let me pause for a second while I, I change the ownership inputs and kind of show you what that's going to look like. And I'm going to show you why we're going to do that in a minute. But let me just pause for a second. So I, I redid the ownership based on, uh, you know, the pool of lineups that I just kind of created. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to re-input. We're going to put all these in again. And we're going to do a rebuild with these new ownerships. And, and I'm going to show you why. When we get to geo mean filtering, it's, it is going to be important to get the best kind of ownerships that you can. Um, but when we're doing geo mean filtering, um, again, uh, it, it's important to get the best ownerships you can. So that's why I think these ownerships are probably the best the best set. But let's um, so let's build again. Again, we'll build forty two lineups. Uh, we don't need to build 5,000 again. We need to only build, how much was that? That was going to be 1,100 or so. And then 1,150, let's say that. And we will allow for uh, opposing players. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we gotta we gotta put our sim settings in. So let's let's first uh well, I, I don't like I don't know why I do it in this order, but let's um let's put our what we have now in the entry editor, which is basically nothing, because I just reserved the lineups. And we'll put here add um well we'll add this contest sim, we'll do this. We're not going to use the, their field. We're going to use our own, right? So we're going to put in build first build, okay? Because that was the, when we built those, you know, those uh, that the set of lineups with the industry or whatever with the, with their standard projections. I think that's going to be probably the best example of the field. Okay. Now we're going to put the same thing in here um, for the break point, the king of the baseline. But again, that's going to require a little less simming and more just kind of eyeballing. But let's just let's just let's just put it in anyway. So we're going to add the contest sim. We're going to call this one the breakpoint, and we're still going to use the same thing. We're going to use still use those ownerships, uh, custom, and that's going to only be right sixteen people. Still paying all these same ratio pretty much, and then we're going to add another contest sim. We're going to call this the qualifier. And again, same thing. We're going to use the first build sets of ownerships, custom. And again, this is only 11. And it's a full like 90% to first, I guess. That's the best way to describe this. Save the settings. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run the Sims. Boom. And see what we get. Okay. Now, again, remember, we, we, we're using uh, the fields of lineups as basically people that just optimize on the projections that are very easy to, to calculate. Um, and now we're comparing our lineups that we built to those and see where we have, if any, some kind of leverage here. Okay, so we sort by risk adjusted ROI. Um, forget who we have exactly. What, what I'm more interested in is, is, well, I am sort of interested in who we have, I guess. Um, yeah, so I am getting, I mean, relative to the pool, 
I mean, this isn't this it doesn't look that terrible. Okay. But the only question is going to be is is this going to be uh unique enough? Right? Um the, the answer is is probably not. Right? So so we have to figure out some way to at least estimate dupes here. Like all these dupe calculators here, it says dupes one, dupes one, dupes one, dupes one, dupes one. So this isn't really helping, okay? Because again, we didn't we didn't create any dupes when we made these lineups, okay? So a uh, couple of things you can do here. Let's let's try to do geo mean filtering and see if we can't at least reduce the amount of dupes somewhat. So the first thing I want to do is figure out what number to put in that geo mean calculator. And again, it completely depends on how many people are in this contest. So it's going to be 1176. So let's put this in. Okay, so 1176, I'm going to show it over here. All right, so if we're going to make it like one dupe, for example, you're going to have to have a geo mean of 30.77 or lower, and that's going to be very difficult. Look at these geo means at the top of like 41. So let's just see. Let's just see if we can even get to any of these. So we'll go filter, and then we're going to go geo mean less than 30.7. I mean, we could try. Yeah, we couldn't get to any. So geo mean filtering isn't really going to help here. I mean, to that point, what if we did? I mean, less. What if we? What if we limited it to four dupes? And of thirty-eight point seven geo mean, can you even get to that? Thirty-eight point seven, and I still think that would be quite a feat in an eight-game slate. Yeah, so we can do that. All right, so this isn't bad. Um, this is probably what I would be inclined to do, you know. And and, and um, again, eight-game slates. It's very difficult to get unique, and if you can get there, I I would probably try it. Um, so uh, for now, this is what I'm going to put in. Let's just take a look. But then I, there's something else we're going to do in a minute. So let's save these into the line painter for now. Oh, we're only playing 40, 30, uh, excuse me, uh, 35 entries. All right, that's fine. So we took the top 35. That, that's fine. And then let's... Um, Let's deal with this. Uh, let's let's deal with the uh, with the with the breakpoint and the qualifier now. So let's take out the filter here, and and we'll just look at the breakpoint. So here you have, you know, it's going to be one of these lineups that most people are going to take. Right? That that that's basically the 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 reality. So it's a question of which one do we want to take? So let's take a look at the projected score. So 306, 306. I mean, all of these are just so close. 303, and then 300, and then 304 down here. So this one's interesting. It's got a, it's got a high projected score, but a lower risk-adjusted ROI. Um, so I have a feeling that this one is going to get played because of the projected score. This one's going to get played because of the projected ROI being the highest. Um, and I think the second one is going to be played because it's so close in projection to the first one. So I think what we're supposed to do is play either the third one or the fourth one. Um, and between these two, I'm inclined to do the third one because it leaves more money on the table. So it's just a little, this one's 500 left on the table and this one's 700, 300. So I think it's just a little more likely this one's unique. Um, so I think that's the one we're going to play in the, what's this in the break point in the break point. So we could either put that in 
Well, let's we can save it to the favorites for now, right? So let's take, save this one to the favorites. And then so this way we don't mess anything up. So let's save this one to the break. Point. I think that's a good way to attack this. All right, now let's go back and let's try to deal with the qualifier. Let's see if it's even the same. So it's the same, basically the same stuff. Let's let's clear out the favorites. And now for the qualifier, we have the same dilemma, right? So we have all these lineups and let's just take a look and see if there's any difference. Right, first of all, uh, projected points, 306.2. Th okay, then 304, then um, uh, 305, 303, 303, 302. And then this 306.1 is all the way down here. It's the highest projected one. But it's it's the 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 risk adjusted ROI is low, so maybe people don't play this one. So we take like a high projected score with a lower risk adjusted ROI. Maybe it's possible. Um, or let's take a look. We can't. We just really can't ever play the first one, you know, because it's got the highest projection and the highest risk adjusted ROI. So someone else is doing that. Uh, so we have to do. We have to do something else. This one's got 50,000 total, so maybe that's not the idea. Maybe this 49.5 again. And is that the same lineup as we had before? It is. Or is this the one we had before? This one's 49.5. And then this one's 49.2. And now we're giving up another point of projection. Ah, goodness. The other thing would be nice if we didn't have to have Jordan Thompson in every lineup, but it looks as though that's the case. So if Jordan Thompson is going to be in every lineup, uh, this one is actually sort of an interesting pivot off of that, right? Because if we take Corda against Justin Jordan Thomas, we get ahead of the field as far as that goes. And the, the ninth rated one, so there's no way it's going to be – the one that's duped, but it's just giving up a lot. So 300, 301. This 306 one is still pretty, pretty intriguing. So it's either going to be this one with the 306, that's not the greatest our risk of just ROI. This one's got to be the ultra dupe. We can't play that one. This one's 50,000. So now we're back to this guy, which is I think the same one we played in the other tournament. So we probably should get a little different as opposed to this one, that's 50,000, or this one. So that one's got Ansema, Buskova, Rublev. This one's got Ansema, Buskova. This one's not a Rublev. So which one did we actually play here? Um, let's see. In the break point, what did we do exactly? We played um, Buskova. Buskova, i got to write this down now. Skova, Thompson, Emma, Shelton, Rublev, and, and Amazon. Emma. So for ours, we could play this one. Well, where were we again? Can't play this one at the top. Can't play that one. It's 50,000. This one is Sabalenka. Michelson. Okay, so this one we didn't play. So this one we can use. So let's put this one in the favorites. And then we will go to the favorites and we will enter this one in the in the queue. No, in the yeah, in the queue. So for now, let's um let's save these. Just in case our internet goes down and there's nothing else. And there's one other thing that I would like to try to use here. I'd like to try to use uh, DFS Hero to, to, to help me a little bit because they're, they're usually pretty good with, with predicting dupes. Um, so let's...
do this. The problem here is that their projections are terrible, their ownership is terrible, but their their software is pretty good. So let let let's let's try to do this. Let's um. So how do we do this? Lineup optimizer. We want to go to first. Or we're in the lineup optimizer. We got to go to projection hub because we have to upload our own to this. Drag a file. Tennis. And then, if I'm not mistaken, player name, and then that maps to this. User own maps to this. Ownership matches to uh, user pro. Oh, no, 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 hold on. So, user. Points go to user projection. Ownership goes to user own. We're importing it all. Next, very good. We're going to manage this. So the aggregate, we're going to use 100% user projection. Um, 0% that we want to use. So we're going to apply. Aggregate is for applying. And then we're done. A unique upload name, uh, test this boom and so it's now in there and we are going to use this set for the projection for the ownership you know the randomness the exposure like all of it okay so let's uh so that's good and you'll see that user projections in here user ownership is in here and we are we should be good to go. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to build, let's build like 500. Okay, we'll do 500, then we're going to send them using, uh, well, hero projection. No, we're going to use user projection. All right, okay. Uh, and let's hit settings. Is it settings? We don't have to set so we don't. All right, so it built, it's building 500 now, and then we're gonna have it sim uh, against the field. And, and we're gonna see what, uh, actually it's using the hero projection. Why is it doing that? Oh, we're gonna be using user projections. Okay, as long as we're using user projections, we're fine. And again, I, I don't don't use DFS Hero for too much, uh, but but for this exercise, I will because it, I think it 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 it, uh, it shows dupes, and um, this will allow me to filter out the 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 over the overly duplicated lineups. All right, let me pause. You don't need to see this. Let me pause this one. All right, so we built all these 500 lineups and now we wanna, we wanna rank these. So uh, we don't want hero mode, we should, we're gonna use custom settings. We're gonna use the contest simulator and how many people are in here? Well, first of all, there's 35 entry limits, 1,150 people, 100% weighted GPP, everything else we're gonna keep the same. And then we are going to hit rank these 500 lineups. And then more important than ranking them, it's gonna give us a column for dupes that we can kind of deal with. All right, so let's uh, let's see all these like dupes 45s or whatever it is. So let's, um, we could download them all, right? Um, so why don't we do that? Let's, uh, Where's the download? Export. Yeah. Oh, but where is the? Where is the spreadsheet that lists the dupes? Let me just see. Something. Well, we certainly don't want these, right? 
So we don't want the ones with 45 dupes. So there's there's a way to, to download this sheet. Um, this exports them all. Wait, this, what do I export a value? What does that do? Rank your values? Let's see, is that it? Yep, okay. So rank your values. So now what we can do here is we can tactfully take out the lineups that are just kind of overly duped. Okay, like this is a, this is the the, the ranking based on, um, this is like the, 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 this is the, the, the ranking of the lineups. This is based on GPP ROI, which is a good place to start. But then what we can do is we could just take out the lineups that have, you know, too many dupes, for example, in this, in this setting. Um, now this isn't going to be perfect, but I mean, let's, we could certainly take this one out, right? Certainly going to take this one out. Certainly we'll take it. And we could obviously filter all this. Um, we'll take this one out and we could even, we could get greedy. I mean, but we could take out because these are all, these are all rated very, very similarly. So why actually, why wouldn't we? take out all these with 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 two dupes either you know i i think that's actually probably a good idea i mean you could even argue that on a on a, on a slate like now again these are not going to be zero dupes i i'm just i promise you we're not it's not uh because other people do very similar things and you're just going to end up getting too many dupes in general but again this is a, at least a start you know so let's take out all these. As a matter of fact, do you want to take out, well, certainly so, you want to take out all the ones that even have zero, that have one? Now, again, I, you see me doing this by hand. I can obviously filter and do this as well. But So we're going to have no lineups here that have, that at least project from this software to have more than one dupe. And they're, they're going to, they're gonna have one. That's just the way it's gonna be. Um, well, you tell me this lineup that uses all 550,000, it's gonna be zero dupe. It's, it's, it's not duped in this 500 lineup set. That's, that's the problem, okay? But the reality is in the actual tournament, people are gonna play this. But it's a good way to sort. Um, as a matter of fact, do I wanna get greedy? I think I do. I think I wanna only play the ones with the zeros. So let's do it. Let's, let, let's see what we can do here. And we're gonna come back and test this to see how well we actually performed. Uh, and we're gonna use the sports projection site to rate our, our, our non-dupeness, say that. So we're going to probably end up doing this instead of that Saberson build. And the reason why, again, I'm, I'm being completely results oriented, but, but, but I think results are in a good way. Like yesterday I did this exact same process. And while I didn't end up winning, I ended up, even though it was a smaller slate with a, a bunch of, of under five uniques of, and, and more um, single uniques than I would have ever imagined. And you know, if things bounced my way like a little bit, a little bit more. I mean, I would have been, uh, I would have been a hero. So let's um, do this. Almost done. We're gonna real. We're just taking out all of the. I know for those of you that are really adept at Excel, you're like, oh, you just have to do this. Just filter this, filter that. It'll take you two seconds. What are you wasting my time for? But it's okay. It's only thirty-five lines. Just take, two, take us two seconds. Get rid of this and look at these. Look at these mega dupes here that we're avoiding. Definitely not doing these. So we're in business. Okay, so it's going to be these 35. So we'll take these out. Boom. We'll go back into the, well, we'll go into DraftKings over here. I'll show you. Tennis, download. This and then we'll replace all these with all these, and then we're off to the races. Save. We'll keep the qualifiers the same. 
and we'll upload those. Oops. And we'll upload those. Um, and we're going to see uh, when, when the slate starts, we're going to uh, analyze our dupes and analyze how well we did. And that's the only way we can really uh, test our play is not just the results, but how well our process got us to lineups that had a chance to win that were not overly duped by the field. So we're going to see um, if we can get like even, uh, I don't know. I don't know what my goal is here, but in 35 lineups, what's fair? If I can get 10 lineups with less than five uniques and less than five dupes, maybe, maybe more than that. I don't know. We're, we're, we're going to see. Um, so I don't know whether I want to pause this and come back at 12. Yeah, I think I'm going to, now, what I'm going to do is this is going to be part one of the video, and then part two is going to be when we analyze the results. And the results will be determined like five minutes after, after long. Uh, okay, that'll do it. Okay, so this is going to be part two. Uh, I'm going to try to figure out how to make this into one video, but if I can't, then I can't. This is where we take a look and see how we did with respect to our uniqueness. Um, again, we're not simming this out or anything like that. Uh, we're just going to just see how many uniques that we have. And I'm running this for the first time just to kind of show you how to do this, actually. So you'll see it's 1243. The slate's already locked. Um, so I'm putting this up after lock, and I'm putting this whole video series after lock that probably the most fair thing to do. And the first thing I have to do is I have to um, download the file for the um, for the tennis slate action. So let's, um, I'm going to do that from here. Export. Uh, and what I'm going to do, well, first thing I want to do is really funny. So I'm going to save this to this file. Because one thing I'm going to do is I want to see how close the uh, the ownership projections were to to actual. Okay, so let's let's do that first. I have a file that will allow me to do that. Let's see where is this ownership tracking? This is my baseball for today. Okay. Um, so we, we, we have this little tool that we, since we, once we downloaded that, that file, we can run this, presuming there are no Excel tweaks or Excel issues. All right. So that just came up. So what this is doing is comparing projected ownership to actual. And, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, standard industry projections or my projections even are. This actually wasn't that bad. I mean, the, here are the two big, big misses. You know, I thought Shapovalov was going to be 45 and it was 24. Shelton, 40, and they're 55. So Michelson and Shelton are getting kind of the, the Shapovalov ownership. The rest were kind of, I guess, close enough. Uh, so let's upload the file and let's let this the site, uh, the sports projection site, um, let's analyze this a little bit. So we're gonna we're gonna be able to see how many of our thirty five uh, lineups were unique. Or well, I don't think any of them were unique. But let's see, like the the dupe report for this. Uh, ooh, does it have it here? Oh, this is annoying. Doesn't have the uh, doesn't have that actual field in here. That's a, that's really annoying. Yeah, it doesn't have the actual content. So we're actually not able to do it. Um, but I guess what we can do, you know what we could do? Let's check out that the qualifier because I wanted to see how, um, I wanted to see how, uh, if we got duped in the qualifier. Let's see, ready? Hope not. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Rublev, let's see if anybody's got this exact same or how many. 
No, not that one. No, not that one either. Ooh, is this one the same? Rublev, Thompson, Buskova. Nope. Dirty Tenor. No, I do not have Buskova. I do not have Korda. Yeah, so we did well with respect to the fact that we did not get duped in the qualifier, which is, which is that's, that's good news. Uh, let's see how, what about in the, uh, in the, uh, the break point? So the break point, hey, we're already off to a good start. Five, three. Um, let's see if we, anybody duped us here. No, no. No, no one's got Radicanu, I guess. Oh, there's Radicanu. Do I have Tiafo though? No, that's good. For uh, Rublev, Tonson, Buskova. Ooh, it's the same one. No, because that one's got Michelson, and this, and I do not. I do not have Corda. I do not have Buskova, right? Or do I? I do. I have Rublev, Thompson, Buskova, Shelton. No. And then this last one. No, it's a couple more. No. So we're good. So we we did not get duped in the break point, and we did not get duped in the uh, in the uh, what you call it, and we did not get duped into the qualifier, which is actually really really good. Um, now with respect to Pure ownership. Can I at least look at that in here? Let's see. Uh, user entry. No. Crap. User exposure. Let's see. Can I find MB Haves in here? Let's see. Uh, no. Where am I? It doesn't. It doesn't sort them the right way. A little annoying. Most duplicated lineups, I can't get that either because it can't scrape this actual contest for some reason. But usually the site does a really good job of that. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, should I how else can I check for uniqueness? It's very hard to do in in the in the line painter. Let's just see. Let us see about this. How can, how can we do this? Um, but here are our entries. It's just so hard from this from this page to do it. Anyway, uh, I guess that'll do it. Hopefully you guys learned a little something from that and hopefully uh, we take something down. Uh, good luck everybody.